Well, welcome to this brief video. I know I often say brief, but this one genuinely is. Now, I've just been recording a session with Professor Norman Fenton when we look at uh, excess deaths in Canada, and that video will be available very shortly. But just as almost as a, as a bit of a chit-chat on the way in, we, we were talking about Norman's academic career, which is extensive. And yet now uh, he can't get published even in preprint journals. There appears to be some sort of uh, publication bias going on now. This gets to a really fundamental issue. If we can only have one person's version of the truth, and truth based on logic and empiricism and numer numerical evaluations is no longer counted, quite where does that leave us? Does it mean we're in the, uh, some sort of post-truth situation at the moment? really quite ominous because in the past we've always gone back to what does the original peer-reviewed publication say but there's a whole section of peer-reviewed publications that are now not admissible it means only the right truth only the correct truth is now being tolerated and to me that is completely uh, ominous but I'll, I'll let you listen to what Norman says and, and uh, judge for yourself well, welcome to this talk and we're delighted to welcome back Professor Norman Fenton. Norman, thank you for joining us again. Always a pleasure. Yeah, thanks for having me on. I've been reading about your academic record, Norman. Apparently you've got over 300 uh, publications in journals and seven books that you've written. Is that about right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So it's course, fair to uh, say you're a lifelong academic, really. Yeah, of course, uh, <laughs> since I started... Um, let's say, writing articles which challenge the mainstream COVID narrative. The, the peer-reviewed, the accepted uh, publications in peer-reviewed journals has gone down to, to zero over those last couple of years. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah. We can't get, can't get oh, anything. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't even, can't even get them into the, into the, uh, ar into the, archi into the uh, preprint servers like Med Archive or Archive. They, they automatically reject anything that comes from me now. Well, you have to follow the narrative, Norman. I mean, you, you know, yeah. we don't want any we don't want any free thinking empiricism, do we? It's just incredible, a, 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 isn't it? Absolutely not. No. no, seriously. Well, what an indictment it is, isn't it? Really, it's. Yeah, I mean, uh, the what can you say about yeah. my what's happened to academia in the last yeah. uh, in the last few years? Yeah. It's, it's quite it's quite distressing. It's not what um, most people actually think it is. It's it's become it's become quite corrupt, really. Yeah. So we can have truth or someone's version of the truth. Yeah, yeah. If you don't fit the if you don't fit the narrative, you're not going to get in, into any of the mainstream academic journals anymore. In fact, you've even done some work for the BBC, haven't you? I did. I actually um, in 2015, um, I actually presented a documentary on called "Climate Change by Numbers" with um, Professor Sir David Spiegelhorst and Hannah Fry. Um, they of course went on to sort of stellar careers with the BBC. I was never called back because I wasn't actually terribly happy with the way that program was, way my part um, on that program was edited. Um, but that's another that's a, that's another story. But yeah, yeah. So no, numbers, I just I just love numbers and mathematics because they, they give us truth. You can't really argue with it at one level, and I am somewhat. Uh, numerically challenged so i'm delighted that you've agreed to come and talk today we want to talk about this data from canada i believe norman the, the excess deaths in canada which we did mention on a video a few days ago and you were kind enough to give some expert advice on yeah so, well there we are question marks at least over british academia and i wanted to play that just as a separate short clip because i really do find this idea of a post-truth world or a world where only a particular truth is allowed is, is being quite a frightening one because everything's predicated on these scientific academic journals the textbooks the arguments the government policies everything now i just want to read briefly this is from um i don't yeah i, I don't mean to be melodramatic but this is george orwell and this really does sound orwellian to me the purpose of newspeak was not only to provide a medium of expression for the worldview and mental habits proper to the devotees of Insoc, but to make all other modes of thought impossible. Let's hope this is not uh, strangely prophetic from the pen of 
George Orwell. Um, I'm going to leave that there because the more I thought about that clip with Norman, the more it did concern me. So I'm, I'm glad I've shared it with you and um, I'll just leave that with you now. And it's a situation that we, if we're aware about it, at least we can, well, I don't know, what do we do? If we're aware of it, what do we do? It's, I really don't know, uh, actually. But um, it's better that we are aware than we're not aware, I think. That's the least we can say. Thank you for now.